Hi friends, this video is regarding RCM accounting entries. Let's look at why and what we do when we talk about RCM accounting. This is more I'm touching from a UAE VAT perspective and you will see some of the sections or articles we are going to talk about that. Let's get started. Generally, when we, we are just trying to look at how we brush our accounting skills and when we do a simple purchase of goods, let it be a, a taxable person is buying some goods maybe I'm using an example where the cost of goods is 3000. As we know, UA has a VAT of 5%, hence the 150 dirhams becomes a VAT which is applicable on the goods. So what kind of a general accounting entries we passed when we are purchasing the goods? What we do is we purchase debit for 3000. We use input tax, which is again debited for 150. And we pay or, or we promise to pay. That means to, uh, to cash account or or promise to pay, that is a payable account, is created by 3,150. Now what happens to the second level? Let's look at what happens in the sales accounting entries. In a similar way, the same transaction, 3,000 value of goods, 150 VAT. What kind of accounting entry a person will make when he's selling goods? Since he's selling goods, the accounting will be either cash account, which is receiving, or a receivable account will be debited for 3,150. And what are you going to do? Since it's a sale, that means it's an output tax, so output tax gets into a credit mode of 150 and the sales account rate gets credited to 3000. I'm not getting too much into the accounting entries because I, I assume these are, the, these are the basic principles which we all know. Uh, now let's look at what the article 48 of reverse charge, which is being laid in the, in the VAT law talks about. So I'm going to read it and the, there are critical points which are being underlined, which are the critical things which we need to understand and, and see what it implies for. So Article 48, reverse charge, which is a specific obligation to account for VAT. This is what he's talking about. If a taxable person imports concerned goods or concerned services for the purpose of his business, then he shall be treated as making a taxable supply to himself. Interesting point. Treated as making a taxable supply to himself and shall be responsible for all applicable taxes, obligation, accounting for due tax in respect of these supplies. Nowhere in the law, we are talking about payment. That's the first point. And second, it is forcing a, a person who is importing to treat as a supply to himself, what it stands for. Let's look at and let's try to unwind the basis of accounting entries. So when example, I'm uh, the reverse charge transaction, if I say finally, what people say is just debit input tax and credit and output tax. That's how your RCM entry comes. But how? That's, that's the thing which I'm going to talk about. I'm not going to tell you that this is just to grab and, and start looking at this is how RCM to be done. But let's look at and understand what the law and how these entries are being arrived at. If I say before the VAT law came up, let's, let's understand the VAT has still not come up. What kind of a purchase accounting entries we used to make? So in this case, let's say we are talking about the same value of goods. Remember, we started with the example. So if my cost of goods imported is 3000, my general import entries will be purchase account debit and payable account credit because I'm going to pay to the foreign country for the 3000 dirhams, which I have imported. Now let's look at what happens if, if I'm going to try to sell to myself. Remember what the law has said, make a supply to himself. That means I am going to sell these goods in our books. Now to whom I'm selling, I'm selling to sell. Hence, I'm going to put receivable as a self account debit to output tax credit, which is 150 since VAT is applicable. And since I'm not selling this basically a stock account, I want to, you can use both. You can use a stock or a sales account and I'm putting it as credit for 3000. Just hold with me. This is what we remember and we have learned in the sales accounting entry. You can just rewind the video and see what kind of a sales accounting entry we have done. And I just copy pasted that sales accounting entry in this transaction. Now let's look at third thing. Now I, I got the goods imported. I sold to myself. My stock is technically zero. I need to bring back the stock in the books. For bringing back stock in the books, I need to pass a purchase entry to myself as a taxable person. Again, remember to the purchase accounting entry we passed and I'm going to use the same analogy and the same accounting treatment for this transaction. I'm going to do a purchase account or a stock account debit for 3000. 
since this is a purchase accounting, I have to do, I have to claim input tax. I'm doing an input tax debit of 150. And simple thing, I'm going to, since, since this is a self transaction, I'm going to receive the money from the self. So self account gets credited for 3,150. We done three entries and let's, let's bring up all these three entries in one go. So you can see all the three entries which we did. First, I purchased, which is a normal purchase I did from the foreign country. Second, which the law is telling me to conduct and do a sale to yourself. That means I have to pass a sales entry. Since the stock is now completely out, to make the stock correct, I have to purchase back those goods also. Now, these are the interesting structure. Now, if you see the three accounting entries, this is where the hidden RCM entries are passed. Now let's go back to the, to the things which we learned in our accounting journey, where we say, let's strike off the common entries and see what is left. What is left is going to be treated as a common factor. So if you see, I have in the three entries, a self-account debit and a self-account credit. So if I merge all these three entries, I can definitely knock off this, yes. And I can knock off the stock account also which is you can see 3000 to 3000. Now what is left? If you see what is left is the RCM entries, which we are being told to pass, not how we understood to pass. Now still, since we have complete analogy and complete structure of our counting entries being done, I'm sure you'll be able to appreciate more on why these reverse charge entries are passed and under what law and under what framework we are being told to pass these entries. Quite interesting thing, just uh, maybe I'm sure these are accounting entries unless you don't scribble them on the paper. It's very difficult to grab. Do it and you will find a quite interesting thing which you have learned in, in, in this session. And I'll, I'll take a little a bit more, but maybe in this next session, I'll tell you something on the advanced accounting entries, how we can pass and what all we can do to make it more structured and more effective way. Thank you. Have a good and a lovely time.